guys, it's me Dan. Welcome to the Benchmark. Today on Project M3, episode... Oh, what episode are we on now? 572. Um, <laughs> we're gonna... Um, we're gonna finish off the CSL conversion. Conversion? No, it's not a conversion. A CS CSL homage. Now, I've got a genuine boot. I've got an eBay special diffuser. Um, the front bumper is also changing because my front bumper's had it. It requires so much work. I must have just put a new one on there. And if I'm going CSL boot, I might as well go CSL front bumper. Um, however, it's, putting the front bumper on is a lot more complicated than putting a boot on. Now, I could go genuine CSL bumper. However, that becomes very, very difficult. If you use a genuine CSL front bumper, you have to change the washer bottle and other parts that are A, very expensive, and B, very hard to get because they're unique to the CSL. So what you need is a replica front bumper, but a good replica front bumper. Um, and they're kind of hard to find. Most of them are, they don't look right, or they made a crappy fiberglass. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. And then there's lots of, lots of misinformation online about what is good and what's not. However, there's a guy, um, again in the UK, called Teddy. Hi, Teddy. Um, he runs SSDD Motorsport, or double S double D. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Anyway, he's based um, in Surrey, South London way. And he deals with nice, tasty carbon fiber and bodywork and other lovely bits for M cars. And he does a front bumper for the E46 M3 that is very high quality, looks one to one with the uh, original. Excuse me. Well, what I was trying to say was one to one with the real CSL bumper. It looks almost identical. It's just inside it's different so that it fits around the original washer bottle, crash bar, etc. So it should, in theory, just fit. However, like most things in my life, it wasn't that simple. Here's me making a schoolboy error, forgetting there's no latch to open the boot, so I have to go and grab the keys. What I found quite amusing was, remember how on the last episode I said the CSL boot's not much lighter? Well, the front bumper, even though it's not made from fiberglass, it's made from plastic, is a hell of a lot lighter than the standard bumper. So, um, yeah, I'm able to lift it by myself quite easily. I was just winding up Matt. I wasn't really just going to sit there and watch him while drinking my Starbucks. Okay, so in order to get the bumper changed, we need to get the car jacked up. Just one side will do. Um, and then just start to undo some of the bolts underneath the wheel well, or wheel liner, depending on where in the world you live. And then get underneath it, and there's a few more screws as well that were underneath the bumper. And then repeat the same for the other side. Now, if you intend on keeping your bumper, it's probably a good idea to have a friend help you. Now, I know in the last video, someone commented, oh, you don't need someone else. Yes, you do. It makes things so much easier when there's two sets of hands. Um, in my case, this, was, uh, this wasn't going to be reused, but still, two pairs of hands makes it a lot easier to remove the bumper. Now, if you're an expert on M3s, you should have noticed something a bit odd right about now. So in order to fit the bumper onto your car, you need to remove the foam piece that came on your original bumper. Um, in order to do that, you need to destroy the bits of plastic that hold it on, and then carefully pry the foam piece off. However, complications happened. So for some reason, I have a facelift bumper, because um, that's carbon fibre. That shouldn't be on there. So it's a bit worrying because to me that says it's been in an accident. 
But honestly, we've been over this car with a fine tooth comb and there's no evidence of it being in anything other than something very minor. So it's most peculiar, it's a 2001 car. That shouldn't be there. Anyway, I've had to uh, pop down to the shops to pick up a Tiger Seal because the bumper that I've got is designed for the pre facelift um, and so we're going to have to do a little bit of bodging to get it to fit the uh, facelift carbon fibre uh, crash bar, so yay. Now the Tiger Seal and the crash bar are actually two separate things, I should have made it a bit more clear and I kind of confused myself, confused everybody else watching this video. So. Yes, the crash bar is from a facelift. Um, don't know why it's there, but that's got nothing to do with why we got the Tiger Seal. We got the Tiger Seal because I wanted the extra bit of security. Now, the foam piece fits on the bumper fine, um, and the methods that we're going to use are also the same as the factory, which is melt the plastic around the foam, and it sticks on. But I just wanted an extra bit of security, so we're using Tiger Seal as well, so the foam is never going to come off. Um, and it's just, you know, peace of mind when you're doing 180 in the Autobahn, you know, your bumper's not going to fall off. Now, the crash bar does complicate things a little bit in a different way because it means the bumper doesn't really fit 100%, and you're going to see what I mean by that later. So here you can see me helping Matt by holding the foam down in place while he uses a soldering iron to melt the plastic around the foam. Um, and just to give you a better idea, here's the actual little bits of plastic um, that he's actually melting, which you can see there at the end. Well, once you open Tiger Seal, that's it. It pretty much expires, so for the hell of it, we added even more, just in case. Now the foam's installed, it's just a simple case of installing all the parts left over from the original bumper. I don't know what you call this part here, it's like a gasket. Um, and it's the original one from the first bumper. Um, as you can see it's pretty old. Um, I actually went back and cleaned it up so it looked 90 times better than it does here. So now the foam piece is on. Um, and a little gasket's on as well. You just got to whack it on the car, and it really is a simple matter of smacking it in. <laughs> um, but as you can see, this is where the problems begin, um, and it's caused mostly by the crash bar um, on the facelift vehicle. I was having a schoolboy moment, wondering why is there a hole there? Um, don't worry, I've ordered the right part. We couldn't get the wheel arch liner to uh, fit properly, so we had to make, um, well, some modifications, I guess you could say. Um, we had to cut a big chunk of the bumper out, unfortunately. Not the best way to do it, but unfortunately there's no other way to do it. Um, so be aware, if you've got a facelift vehicle, even if you've got a pre-facelift vehicle, you're going to need to do some cutting and some hacking and some gluing in order to get this bumper to fit. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best job on a number plate, but it's temporary, so it'll do. It'll do. So now the bump is fitted, um, and everything lines up quite well. Well enough, anyway, before it goes to the body shop, so I'm happy. Um, I had Matt uh, reset the adaptions. Um, he also tweaked the clutch on the SMG gearbox to be more progressive. Now all that was left to do was throw away the old bumper. So we managed to successfully install the CSL bumper. Yeah, the front bumper's not very easy, and it's not that great. Um, so unless you're a professional, and you've done it before, or you're good with installing body kits, I wouldn't recommend you trying to do it yourself at home. Um, 
and just be aware that fitment is still an issue. And this is one of the better kits. Um, there's some really shockingly bad bumpers out there. Um, I wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. So it wasn't that straightforward. Um, at the same time, we had the adaption of the gearbox changed again. Uh, the clutch biting point wasn't quite right. Um, and Matt had a fancy new uh, diagnostic system and he was able to um, he was able to uh, reset and change that. So now the car's a lot smoother at pulling away. Like that. CSL bumper, not really a success. I'm missing a part. Um, you know how the CSL bumper's got a hole. Um, on mine, I've still got a lot of flash left over from the mold. Um, there's a little grill that needs to pop in there. I don't have it, but I've managed to order it, so that will clip in. So I'll, uh, I'll fix that. Um, but yeah, so this episode is a wrap. Front bumper fitted. We've got the boot fitted. We've got diffuser fitted. Um, and I say all the all the electronics, the computers, all being reset. Um, I had, I've installed a mass sensor. You haven't seen that. I put a new mass sensor in, and the car's much smoother since doing that. The one I had in there was like dark brown. Um, so I've got a brand new genuine mass sensor in there. Um, so adaptions are reset. The SM, SMG was upgraded before, as you know, with CSL software. Um, but the clutch biting point has been changed. Oh, it's sharp. Very sharp. Hello. Hello. Didn't you see that before? Um, oh, you may have noticed I'm a BMW driver, but I use my indicators. So if you ever see an M3 and a guy using indicators, you're probably that's probably me you're looking at. So hi. So yeah, all the CSL bits are on. CSL software's on. Car's running like a peach. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I would uh, really appreciate it to help fix my car. The more people that watch and the more people that subscribe, <laughs> you know, the extra few pence and pounds that I get that enable me to afford to fix it. Okay, guys, take care. Thanks. Bye.